Thank you very much. Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Brown. I'm a uh, program manager on the Azure Cosmos DB team. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Mark J. Brown. Uh, welcome and today I'm going to talk about uh, building high performance distributed applications with Azure Cosmos DB. So to kind of kick it off, uh, well, let's just ask the question. So why build distributed applications in the first place? Uh, and there's two reasons primarily. Uh, first is availability. Uh, consider the scenario if you build an application and you deploy it into a region in Azure, uh, and then that region becomes unavailable or the region goes down, whether it's for networking or storage or any other reason. Uh, your, that region goes down, your application is down, your business is down. Uh, so a uh, way to avoid that is to build and deploy your application into multiple regions. Uh, the second reason you would do this is for latency. Uh, let's say you've got customers uh, all around the world uh, or on multiple continents, say in Europe or Eastern Europe or Western Europe or Asia or the Americas. Uh, how do you re improve response times uh, when your users are on another continent, right? So packets take a while to get over uh, backbone or over the internet. Uh, the closer you can get the application and especially the data, uh, to your users uh, is going to reduce latency because those requests don't have to travel as far uh, as well as the responses to them as well. Uh, but there are trade-offs, however, uh, that you need to be understood uh, when building distributed applications. Uh, and in this talk, uh, I'm going to explore these. Uh, and so the majority of this talk is going to focus around uh, these three concepts. Uh, and these concepts are fundamentally trade-offs you need to understand when building distributed applications. Uh, and those are availability, uh, latency, uh, and consistency. So important to understand each of these concepts is fundamentally tied to each other. And it's essential that you as developers understand the relationship between them uh, because there are trade-offs that have to be made in order to build distributed applications uh, with distributed databases that have predictable performance uh, and availability. So before we get started though, I want to define consistency. Uh, most people recognize consistency in the context of a relational database in a transaction. However, for a distributed data store like Cosmos, this is not what we mean when we talk about consistency. Rather, consistency in a distributed system means uh, the uniformity of data uh, in replicas that are separated by hundreds or even thousands of miles. Uh, so fundamentally a different thing. Uh, okay, so with that definition, let's dive in. Uh, now in this talk, we're going to cover the three concepts we talked about. So availability, consistency, and latency. Uh, and as luck would have it, uh, there is a theorem that describes a relationship for two of these concepts, uh, and that's called CAP theorem. Now CAP theorem was uh, formulated in the late 90s uh, by a computer scientist named Eric Brewer. Uh, and what it says is that in a distributed data store cannot provide more than two out of the following three guarantees. Uh, consistency. So every read reads uh, receives the most recent write or an error. Uh, availability. Uh, so every request receives a non-error response, uh, but without the guarantee that it contains the most recent data. Uh, and then partition tolerance. So the system continues to work despite an arbitrary number of messages being dropped or delayed or network being cut uh, between the nodes. Uh, so simply put, uh, really what CAP theorem says is that if the network goes down between two nodes in a system, uh, you have a choice. You can choose between availability for the system or you can choose for consistency uh, in the system. And let me illustrate this. So in this system here, uh, I have a master database where I'll write data on the left-hand side, and then a read replica where I will read data on the right-hand side. Uh, and these replicas are separated by some amount of distance. In this scenario here, I'm going to choose availability for the distributed system. So as I write five in the master, I replicate that data and it becomes five over on the replica where I read it. Uh, and this works fine when the network between them is working as expected. However, if I cut the network connection between these two uh, replicas and I write five or excuse me, six uh, into my master, uh, I'm still going to read five in the replica uh, because I am making a conscious decision uh, that I'm going to optimize for availability uh, in this system. So I'm going to sacrifice consistency for my data uh, in a network partition. 
Now, let's flip this. So let's choose consistency for the system. So network working fine, that's great. I'll write five in the master and then faithfully replicate five over in the replica where I'll read that. Uh, but if we cut the network connection between these in this system, because I am optimizing and choosing consistency for my system, if I try to write more data into it, I must return an error. I cannot commit the data uh, globally, uh, so I cannot remain consistent, which means I've got an error here. Okay, so CAP theorem does a good job describing the choice customers need to make when the network is cut, uh, but it doesn't provide the full picture, the full picture when designing distributed systems, uh, because there's actually a third trade-off here, and that's the one around latency. Uh, so this picture was completed in 2010 with the introduction of PACLC theorem. Uh, and what this reads is, in the case of a network partition in a distributed system, one has to choose between A, availability, and C, consistency. So that's the cap theorem part. But even when the system is running normally in the absence of partitions, one still has to choose between latency and consistency. So that looks like this. So on the left-hand side, I have cap theorem, which describes the choice I have to make if I have a network partition. Uh, and then on the right side is what PACLC theorem adds to the equation here, which is even when the system is working normally, when the network is there, I still have another choice I have to make. I have to choose between latency in my system or consistency within it. Let's illustrate this again. So in this system here, I'm choosing consistency for my system. So I write five, I replicate five, I commit five in my replica, and then I act it back. What I'm illustrating here is that I'm giving up latency in the system because to be globally consistent or consistent within this system, I have to commit it locally, replicate it, commit it, and then act it back. So I'm choosing consistency in this system and sacrificing latency because I have to commit the thing or commit the data uh, everywhere else in the system. Now let's choose latency. So in this system here, uh, I can just write data and just replicate it whenever I feel like it. I'm optimizing for latency in this system and sacrificing consistency. So as I write data in the master, chances are if I'm reading that data in a replica, uh, I'm not going to see the most recent data in the system. I may see older data or stale data uh, within the system. The benefit is I get much lower latency for data that I write within the system. And then the trade-off is that I lose consistency uh, within that system there. So you may think, hey, well, why would I sacrifice consistency within a system? This seems like a very painful price to pay, uh, but it's actually more common than you think. Uh, and it's common in systems like banking, where you would think that's not uh, uh, the way you would uh, expect it to, to, to be, uh, but it's actually quite common uh, for banking to have an eventual type of consistency within their systems. Uh, retail is another uh, application where you do not maintain global consistency for a data uh, across a system. Uh, it's actually quite common or more common than people think uh, in distributed systems. Okay, so with that part out of the way, I want to talk about each of these concepts uh, in detail, and we'll talk about latency first and then consistency and then availability uh, for the rest of this talk. And I'm going to highlight it and point it out with some benchmarks uh, that I'll run uh, to help you see in real terms uh, these trade-offs and what they mean for your application and its performance and how these concepts are really intertwined uh, with each other. So again, to expand on latency, another way to frame this is latency equals performance, right? The lower your latency, the faster requests are handled and the better performance for your applications overall. With a distributed system, the way to reduce latency is to replicate data closer to your users. So in Cosmos, data replicated to the region where your application is deployed uh, is going to get a guaranteed 10 milliseconds or less of response time uh, for a kilobyte of data. Uh, and we have SLAs over that type uh, of performance. So let's do a demo here. So I've got a Cosmos database. Uh, it's located in our East US 2 region uh, here in the United States. I've then got a VM uh, that's located in West US 2 uh, all the way across the continent. 
And I'm going to do some read tests. So I'm going to read 100 records out of Cosmos DB uh, from that VM all the way across the US with a single region. I'll then show you the performance or the latency I'm going to get if I replicate that data. So I'll then have a Cosmos account that has a region in East US 2 and then also replicates that data to West US 2, the same region where that VM is running from. Okay. So here I have my application up and running, and this thing is sitting inside a VM in West US 2, and I'm going to run a set of benchmarks here. So we'll run the first one here, and this one is going to test 100 reads against a single master account uh, in East US 2 with a read uh, VM in West US 2. So let's test that. And here we can see I'm getting about 70 milliseconds uh, or so of latency. Uh, not that awesome frankly, for uh, request, uh, not bad, I guess about average, I guess, for across the US, but still, uh, that's a pretty high amount of latency uh, for a database. Now let's try this. We're gonna try the same benchmark, 100 reads. Uh, this is a single master account. Uh, and now I'm gonna replicate this data from East US 2 to West US 2 in the same region where my BM here is located. And let's look at the response times here. Wow, so you can see much, much faster. I just ripped through those 100 reads uh, in probably less than a second. Uh, each of those was running at two, three, sometimes even a single one millisecond uh, in terms of response times. So huge impact by replicating your data. The closer you get your data to your application or to your users, uh, the faster your application is gonna perform. And there you can see my average latency difference of 70 milliseconds versus two milliseconds for the application. Okay, let's go back to slides. So in the preceding scenario, replicating data to the second region helped with latency for reads for the application. Uh, but we all know that applications don't just read data, uh, they write data too. Uh, and so with an account or a, a, a distributed database where I have a single replica that's acting as my write master. Uh, I still have to face latency issues with writes in my application because they still need to go all the way back to East US 2 uh, where the write master replica is located. Well, how do I deal with that? Well, the way you deal with that in Cosmos is to use a feature called multi-master. Uh, so what this does is that it takes every replica within your distributed database uh, and makes it fully writable. Uh, and the benefit here is now you're going to get the, the same less than 10 millisecond uh, latency uh, that you get for reads, but you now get it for writes uh, as well, and also guaranteed with an SLA. So this is pretty cool. So let's demo this. So I'm going to do a new demo here. I have the same uh, or different accounts now set up in the same two regions. So I have a single master account set up in East US 2, uh, and it replicates uh, read replica to West US 2, and I'll do a set of reads and writes for that, showing the latency. Uh, I then have another account that's a multi-master account, and that's running in East US 2 and West US 2, and I'll show a series of reads and writes uh, out of that. So let's go back to our demo, and I'll run the second benchmark here. So I'm going to test 100 reads against a single master account from West US 2, uh, replicating in West US 2 from West US 2, and this will be fast because we just showed that if you replicate your data, uh, it's going to be super fast to read it. Uh, now let's test 100 writes using that account. And you can see I'm back to high latency again because all of my requests have to go all the way across the country uh, over to East US 2 and commit uh, and then act back uh, within there. So let's try this with a multi-master account. So the reads are going to be fast, right? Because we're replicating that data over from East US 2 to West US 2. Let's try 100 writes uh, and see what that's like. And here you can see. So now I'm down to low millisecond uh, response times because I'm, or I'm, excuse me, I'm writing to the replica that's in the same region uh, where my application or where my VM is sitting. So here you can see uh, where multi-master on the right path now uh, make sure latency much, much lower, uh, just like replicating itself, make sure reads uh, much, much quicker. Okay, 
Let's go back to slides. Okay, so let's move on to consistency. This is the second concept uh, I want to cover in the talk here today. So Cosmos has five consistency levels to choose from. Uh, these are strong, bounded staleness, session, consistent prefix, and eventual. And as with everything in distributed computing, consistency models themselves are a series of trade-offs that include higher or lower latency uh, or higher and lower throughput. Uh, so let me go into detail on each one of these uh, and I'll describe them uh, in much greater detail. So strong consistency, as you might expect, is the strictest consistency model. Data written using strong consistency is synchronously replicated to every replica in the system. Right, so that's where the latency becomes a hit uh, because this is a synchronous operation to replicate and commit data within the system. Uh, but what this means is that the reads are guaranteed to return the most recent committed version of an item. There's no dirty reads. Clients will never see an uncommitted or partial write uh, within the system. Uh, scenarios where you see strong consistency use uh, are typically applications where they have a requirement for RPO of zero. Uh, and what that means is that the application cannot tolerate any data loss should a disaster or a regional event uh, occur within the system. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, there's of course a trade off here, right? Because of the latency uh, is going to be greatly increased uh, as every write must be replicated and committed globally uh, to every replica before it's recognized as committed within the database. OK, so that's strong consistency. Next up is bounded staleness. So in this consistency model, data is replicated asynchronously. OK, so it's not part of the commit itself. Uh, and with bounded staleness, uh, what you have is a predetermined staleness window uh, that's defined by either a number of updates to the system so it can lag behind a certain number of commits uh, or a period of time. Uh, and it uh, guarant and consistency has to be guaranteed uh, once it reaches uh, that maximum value. That's why it's called bounded in that sense. Uh, so data outside the stainless window is guaranteed to be globally consistent uh, within the system. And we'll replicate that and commit it uh, within the bounded stainless window uh, uh, for that global consistency. Uh, and as that consistency window uh, or that stainless window approaches, um, Cosmos, what it does is it'll apply back pressure on the right path uh, to allow replication to catch up uh, and honor the consistency guarantees uh, for bounded staleness within the staleness window that you've defined uh, there. Uh, so reads made within the same region, uh, it's important to point out, and as you can see here in the illustration, are, are going to see strong consistency. Uh, so if you have uh, writers or multiple readers within the same region, uh, they're going to enjoy strong consistency uh, for that data, uh, but without having to pay the penalty uh, for latency, increased latency on the writes. Uh, and then within the staleness window itself, uh, readers in different regions will see updates uh, in the order in which they're made. And this is better known as consistent prefix guarantees. Uh, and then Cosmos accounts with multiple write regions uh, or multi-master uh, when there are writers in multiple regions. So this would be in a uh, high throughput, high volume ingestion uh, scenario. Uh, they will see eventual consistency, not consistent prefix. Uh, in a scenario, however, where you're using a multi-master, but using it in a disaster, like a DR scenario, so for quick failovers, uh, you will get consistent prefix uh, for readers in other regions. So it'll it'll uh, it'll honor the consistent prefix guarantees. It's only when you have writers in multiple regions uh, that readers will get eventual consistency on the data. So next level of consistency is session uh, and session is a unique consistency level uh, in that it's a client centric model, not data centric uh, as the others are. Uh, so for applications with either a single instance client uh, or multiple clients sharing the same session token. So how this works is the Cosmos client provides a, to a session token uh, that you can actually share among multiple instances. Uh, reads are guaranteed to honor consistent prefix, monotonic reads, monotonic writes, read your writes, and write follow read guarantees. 
Uh, now, that's a mouthful in terms of the consistency guarantees, uh, but what it really means is that if your application has a single client instance or multiple clients sharing the same session, uh, you will not see dirty data. So functionally, you're getting kind of a strong consistency, uh, if you will, and that's illustrated here uh, in uh, the musical notes that you can see here. Clients outside the session, uh, so whether they're in the same region or in different regions, uh, we'll see consistency prefix guarantees. So they'll get rights or they'll get updates in order uh, that they were made. Uh, and then of course, clients outside the session uh, where you have rights in multiple regions simultaneously, so this would be a multi-master scenario, uh, they will see eventual consistency uh, with the data. Uh, more relaxed still is consistent prefix. So with consistent prefix, the consistency level guarantees that readers will never see out of order rights uh, within their application. Uh, nice thing is consistency prefix provides write latencies, availabilities, and read throughput comparable to what you would get for eventual consistency, uh, but provides those order guarantees that suit uh, kind of the scenarios where they want to see updates uh, in a particular order. Uh, and then for readers where all rights go to a single region, uh, of course, they'll see consistent prefix guarantees. Uh, and then again, when using multi-master and writing into multiple regions simultaneously, uh, readers will see eventual consistency guarantee. And speaking of eventual, of eventual that's the last consistency level. Uh, and as the name implies, uh, there's no ordering guarantee for reads uh, within the system. And eventually replicas will converge to a global order uh, within the uh, system there. So of course, being the weakest form of consistency, uh, clients can read data that's older uh, than updates that it had before. Uh, and frankly, this is actually a pretty common uh, consistency level that's used for applications, uh, but certainly ones where you don't require any ordering. Uh, I can think of some examples like uh, counts on retweets uh, or likes or say non-threaded comments within like a blog engine. Uh, eventual consistency uh, works in those kinds of scenarios. Also in Scenarios like IoT telemetry ingestion, uh, we will typically see um, eventual consistency used uh, because they're going to tend to put that into some kind of Lambda architecture uh, and they just want to be able to have the highest amount of write throughput possible uh, so they will drop consistency to eventual. Okay, so as I showed earlier uh, on the PAC LC slide, you have to make a trade off for latency uh, and consistency. Uh, and in distributed systems where replicas are separated by long distances, uh, the speed of light can become a problem. And it's important to note that this trade-off from latency to consistency is a direct relationship, and it gets more pronounced with the greater distance uh, between the replicas. Uh, now, packets can't move faster than the speed of light. Uh, and in a way, and in fact, they actually move quite a bit slower. And the reason is simple. Uh, packets have to go through network switches and routers and hubs and all kinds of other stuff uh, versus light, which doesn't have to go through anything, uh, just space. Uh, so uh, these things have an impact uh, on these, uh, on the consistency versus re latency relationship here. Another thing uh, to consider here is that uh, there's also a trade-off on consistency versus throughput. Uh, so this table here shows for each consistency level uh, the quorum reads and quorum writes for Cosmos DB. Uh, on the right, I've got a replica set. So within each physical partition in each region, uh, data is stored four times or written to four times uh, and read to as well. So when we write data uh, for Cosmos DB, we write to what's called a local majority for relaxed levels of consistency, uh, which means we're going to hit three replicas or three of the four replicas within there. Uh, and then for strong uh, consistency, we call that a global majority. And what that means is uh, it's local majority for in region uh, and then replicated and local majority for every other region within your account, uh, creating a global majority uh, committed right. Uh, on the read path uh, for relaxed levels of consistency, uh, so session consistent prefix or eventual, this, re this read is done using a single replica. Thus, it costs one RU. In Cosmos DB, to read one kilobyte of data or less for these relaxed levels of consistency is a one RU charge, one throughput, or one RU charge. So one RU for these relaxed levels of consistency. However, 
For strong and bounded staleness, we read from two replicas. And we do this to guarantee the consistency for the data. Remember here, we're writing to three replicas uh, within uh, uh, the replica set. What this does is that this makes sure that you are getting the latest data. How we do that is each write within Cosmos DB has what's called an LSN or a log sequence number. With these two levels of consistency, what we do is when we do the read on these two replicas, we will compare the LSN between those two replicas. If they match, that's great. That means that's the latest data. If they don't match, which is possible, if I wrote to these three replicas and then read from these two, what we will do is take the higher LSN because that represents the latest update to the data. Thus, this provides consistency guarantees for your application. However, it impacts the throughput on your read path because functionally it requires two reads to do the same or to get the same piece of data. So you get half the throughput uh, for reads uh, within your application. And I'll show you that uh, in a little bit later. Uh, last thing I wanted to share uh, is that, uh, and also not widely known, uh, is, uh, but frankly, this addresses kind of a concern or limitation of CAP theorem. Uh, is our ability to maintain uh, what's called dynamic quorums. Uh, and these are for accounts configured for strong consistency. So for an account configured with strong consistency that's replicated in three or more regions, uh, what we will do is we will dynamically adjust uh, the, the global write quorum to allow data to be committed uh, in the event one of your regions becomes unavailable. So in CAP theorem, what it says is that if you cannot replicate your data globally, uh, you cannot accept any rights at all. And what we do is we bend the rules here a little bit and we say, OK, uh, if we lose one of your regions there or one of your regions goes down, uh, what we will do is we will drop it from the quorum and then commit that data in all the other remaining regions. And then within the SDK client, what we do is we redirect the reads to go to those other regions. So that allows us to maintain availability for your applications uh, should a regional event occur uh, while you're using uh, strong consistency. So you're going to get the RPO zero and you're going to get the continued availability uh, with no downtime. OK, let's do some more demos. So I want to show you the trade offs between consistency versus latency uh, with a series of benchmarks, and then I'll show you the consistency versus throughput uh, with a series of reads. OK, so what I've got is uh, another Cosmos account. Uh, I have a right region in West US 2, uh, and then I'm replicating that to our central US region. That's eh, a thousand miles or about 1600 kilometers away. Uh, and I'm using eventual consistency for this account. And what we'll do is we'll measure the speed of the writes uh, that I do into West US 2 uh, for, that, uh, for that benchmark. Next, what I'll do is I'll show you the latency uh, for the same two regions, uh, but this account is configured with strong consistency. OK, so I'll have to replicate that and then act it back and we'll see the impact on latency for that. And then next, just to show you the impact of the speed of light, uh, I'll double the distance in here. So this is about 3200 kilometers uh, and then we'll look at and measure the latency uh, for those rights as well. And then the second set of tests, I want to measure throughput. So this is the cost for doing reads uh, out of Cosmos, and I'll measure that for an account with eventual consistency. Uh, and then I'll measure that again, same test, uh, but this account has strong consistency. OK, back to our demos here. And let's run test number three. So I'm going to test 100 writes in this account with eventual consistency in West US 2 replicated to Central US. And let's see, what is our speed here? Super fast, right? Very low latency, four or five millisecond here, right? OK, now let's do that same test for an account configured with strong consistency. And here you can see much slower, about 10 times slower, about 62. Uh, or so milliseconds, 63 milliseconds on average. Uh, so quite a bit slower. Uh, that's the trade off with the latency versus consistency in here. Uh, and now let's do this test. So uh, strong consistency and <clears throat> let's double the distance. And as you might expect, 
this direct relationship, you double the distance, you have pretty much double the latency within here. So we're running at about 120 something or so milliseconds, 115 on average there. We had some good fast ones there. Uh, so double the distance, double the latency. Okay, so let's test 100 reads. So now we're gonna measure the cost of a read uh, using eventual consistency. And that's one RU because we're reading from a single replica. And now let's test 100 reads uh, for an account with strong consistency. And as I said, two replicas, two RU, uh, half the throughput, uh, but I get guaranteed consistency in my data. Okay, let's go back to slides. Okay, so we've talked about latency. We've talked about consistency and the trade-offs for those two. Uh, let's talk last about availability. So building highly available systems means, of course, you must design for failure. Uh, you're running uh, on commodity hardware, uh, and that's true of all clouds where applications are all running on commodity hardware. Uh, you have to design for resiliency and to be able to recover from failures, uh, both at a regional level uh, as well as within region itself and within individual logical tiers and components within your system. So to maintain availability during a regional event, uh, what you do, of course, is deploy into multiple regions. That way, if, say, North Europe goes down, that's fine. We'll redirect users to Southeast Asia or West US or West Europe or wherever else you're deployed in. Uh, and of course, you're going to use like a DNS-based load balancer, like a traffic manager, uh, and that can direct users to the closest region based upon uh, response times or can be used to uh, fail over should a region become unavailable. Uh, and then of course within region uh, you're going to load balance and have like a reverse proxy at your front end there and then you don't want to uh, of course uh, suffer failures for say a VM or a piece of compute uh, for your web tier. So of course you'll deploy multiple instances uh, and then load balance over those things. So if one of your web uh, uh, apps or web instances goes down, uh, that's fine. You just remove it from the load balancing pool and then redirect requests to your other ones and then spin up a new one and then put it back into the pool and then you're back where you started again. And then of course you're going to do that at every logical tier within your application. And then on the database side, uh, hopefully you've chosen a nice database like Cosmos DB, which is built to be a distributed data store uh, and is in every region in Cosmos where Ring Zero service. Uh, uh, so we're everywhere uh, that you are, could possibly be within Cosmos. Uh, and we replicate data faithfully from uh, every region to every other region where you're configured for your account. And then, of course, even within region, as I showed you before, our replica set. So we have four copies of data uh, in region redundancy. Uh, and of course, since we only write to three of them, uh, should one of those replicas fail uh, from an update or any other reason, uh, not a problem. You only need three replicas to maintain uh, availability within uh, Cosmos. Uh, we'll drop out that replica and then spin up a new one, uh, backfill it, and then join it back into the replica set. Uh, so you're back to uh, a four replica replica set within Cosmos DB. Uh, and in fact, this is how we do updates for service updates for Cosmos DB uh, for customers is uh, we will drop a replica out of there and put a new one in and then just continue to do that across update domains uh, for Cosmos DB. And that allows us to maintain uh, high availability for customers uh, and allow us to do maintenance and of course allow for uh, failures that do occur uh, from time to time uh, because we're all running on commodity hardware. Okay, so designing a distributed system for high availability is just part of the task here. Right, you must also develop a business continuity plan should event, uh, an event occur. Uh, and to do this, you must understand your system's tolerance for data loss and downtime. Uh, and this is commonly referred to as RPO and RTO, or recovery point objective or recovery time objective. RPO, of course, being how long did you lose data? And RTO is how long are you down for? Uh, and these are, of course, a function of time, both of them, RPO being before the disaster and where do you have, uh, and how durable is your data before then uh, and how much data did you lose? Uh, and then, of course, RTO for how long are you down for? Uh, and these are both driven both by business and technical requirements for your application. Uh, and it's critical to know uh, what these values are and what your tolerance is for them 
uh, because they both have a direct impact on the consistency level or model that you choose uh, for your application. Now, in our documentation, uh, we publish this table, uh, and that illustrates the SLOs for RPO and RTO provided by Cosmos DB uh, should a regional event occur. Uh, and so let's walk through a few of these because I want to call out some things in here. Uh, for accounts running in a single region uh, in any replication mode, any consistency mode, RPO is going to be by default four hours. That is the default amount of time between snapshot backups that we take on your data. Now, you can request a shorter uh, interval uh, for that, and then you can also request a longer retention period too, uh, and we'll just charge you for the blob storage that it takes uh, to store that. Uh, and I encourage customers to do that. Uh, they should uh, increase their backup uh, retention period for more than four hours, or excuse me, uh, 240 minutes in there, eight hours. Uh, your RTO, however, for a single region, uh, we post that something less than a week. Uh, and that's not to say that's the average for that. Uh, that's a worst case scenario where an entire storage stamp uh, is, you know, goes down and they can't recover the data. So they have to restore it uh, from another region and then all the data has to be put back together. So worst case scenario. However, if you're really you're designing an application for high availability, would you run it in a single region? You certainly wouldn't do it from a compute standpoint, uh, and you shouldn't do it from a database standpoint either. Really what you want to run is run in multiple regions so that your applications uh, can have a higher level of availability. And as you can see here, with more than one region running single master replication, relaxed levels of consistency, so session, consistent prefix, or eventual, RPO of 15 minutes. This is essentially a function of how quickly we replicate data uh, using these relaxed levels of consistency. Uh, and frankly, that's a worst case scenario. If you uh, if you write a single kilobyte of data into Cosmos and do nothing else, uh, your data is likely going to be globally consistent in something on the order of a few seconds at most. Uh, so we will faithfully replicate your data as quickly as we can uh, so how fast that happens using these relaxed levels of consistency is entirely a function of how quickly you're writing data uh, into Cosmos DB because we use our use or throughput within your account uh, or within your container uh, to handle, of course, not just the writing of data, but also the replication of it. Uh, your RTO for that level of uh, consistency is at 15 minutes. And what that is is a function of how quickly, when using automatic failover mode in Cosmos DB, how quickly can we fail your account over uh, should that region become unavailable and then promote one of your secondaries uh, to be the new right master within there. And then that's the same for bounded staleness and strong. And as you can see for bounded staleness, your RPO is going to be better than 15 minutes uh, at a minimum for a multi-region account, uh, 100,000 uh, updates or five minutes, 300 seconds uh, is the upper bound for RPO, uh, which is pretty good for most use cases. And then of course for strong, your RPO is zero. And that's because every time you write any data into your system, we will synchronously replicate it and commit it into every other region. So you do zero data loss with strong consistency. Now, where things get interesting is with multi-master. So you have a multi-master configuration, relaxed level of consistency, same RPO, uh, but you have an RTO of zero. And the reason this is, is because in our SDK client, we will actually detect if a region becomes unavailable, retry that, and then if it continues to not respond, we will then redirect that same request and put it into your next region, whatever the next closest region is going to be, uh, and then redirect all future requests to that region uh, until that region comes back. Uh, so this functionally gives you an RTO of zero, uh, with the same RPO of 15 minutes or less with relaxed levels of consistency and uh, 100,000 updates or five minutes, 300 seconds uh, for bounded stillness. Uh, you might have noticed that we do not have that available for strong consistency. And you may ask yourself, well, why would you not do that? And the reason is because strong consistency, uh, because it's synchronous, uh, actually negates the benefit of multi-master. Uh, it doesn't, 
the whole benefit of multi-master as I showed you earlier is I get low latency for my writes uh, and fast failover. And that doesn't happen when you use strong consistency within there. Another question you may say is, Mark, why can't I get RPO0 and RTO0? And I see this question a lot. And the reason is because CapTherm says you cannot, right? RPO is functionally consistency, right? Consistency defines the RPO that you get within your application, uh, def defining what that consistency, or excuse me, what that RPO uh, and data loss or data durability is going to be. And then RTO is functionally availability within the application, right? So those two trade-offs that we discussed earlier are functionally defined by what your tolerance is for RPO and RTO within your application. And it's why understanding your tolerance uh, for those two things and what the upper limits for those things are have an impact on what consistency model you choose uh, within your application. Okay. That's it for my talk. Uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm doing on time here. Yeah, that's pretty close. Uh, I wanted to share with you some resources here. Uh, most notably uh, is the benchmarks that you saw here. Those are all available in GitHub, uh, aka.ms slash cosmos dash global dash demos. Uh, the deck that you saw here as well uh, is also available uh, in that repository. I uh, also recommend, please feel to go check out some of our documentation on these uh, subjects, uh, global distribution, which talks about our replication, uh, consistency, and then high availability. Uh, feel free to follow us on Twitter at Azure Cosmos DB. Uh, and then also we have a pretty handy little site, gotcosmos.com. Lots of links to resources, architecture guidance, reference architectures, uh, all sorts of great content in there uh, as well. Uh, so that's it for the content uh, that I've got for you uh, today. If you have any questions, uh, you can come off mute and ask or just type them into the chat window.